Click Stuff is brought to you by Lucky Dice Cafe out of Huntsville, Alabama. Check them out at luckydicecafe.com. Hey everybody, welcome to the Sudden Death Podcast of, from Clickstaff. This is your host, Sam Powell, and with me, I have TJ Wheeler. Hey guys. And Mr. Azarish Strife. Hey, how's it going? So, two of my great buddies, my friends, my co host and teammates, uh, we're here to just talk about clicks, talk about all the good things that's going on in the community. So, but before we get started... I want to let everybody know that Clickstaff is sponsored by Trollandtoe.com. Visit Trollandtoe.com, the world's largest hero clicks dealer, for all your hero clicks and gaming needs. So if you're needing that something specific for the com- complete your collection, uh, visit Trollandtoe.com to find great prices. Use the coupon code Clickstaff for five percent off your hero clicks order. Merchant and pre-order items do not apply. And if you like what you're hearing today at Clickstaff with sudden death. Check us out at patreon.com forward slash clickstaff. One dollar and above gets you entered into our monthly giveaways. Five dollars and above gets you entered into our exclusive Discord server for all the hero click strategy and tactics discussion. So guys, um, it's been a little while since we've um, talked. I kind of gave you guys a break to kind of uh, get settled back from Worlds. And um, I have to say... I wasn't there, but I'm very proud of Clickstaff and how we represented and how well everybody did. So I'm going to kind of just let you guys talk about Worlds and how you guys did and what you played and go from there. Sure. Yeah, the team had a had a really solid showing as far as from what I can remember with uh, one of us, uh, Dan, winning the Pulp, uh, Pulp World Championship. Um, no, he got second. Or second, sorry, sorry, second. If you're not, uh, if you're not you know, first, you're last. Well, <laughs> um, it kind of felt like that this year, but yeah, right. Um, uh, with the, with the prizing, you know, like if you got yeah. first, you got like really good prizing. You got second, it's like poop on you. Yeah. Like why did you bother? Uh, TJ and I actually, getting... it wasn't too bad. I got I got seventh in pulp, and my my prizing wasn't awful. <laughs> Um, did you but, or did you not get Plastic Man objects? No. I did not. I got a Batman and Jaro and an Old Man Hawkeye. It's because they gave him the all out of Gen Con. Time. It's because they you gave him all out of Gen Con. Lucky. I didn't get one of those for teams. Oh. Well, hey, TJ. <laughs> you want to get rid of your Batman Jaro? <laughs> yeah, I just wanted one to get rid of it. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, then uh, TJ and I got made top eight. Uh, with Tony Bruno again. Um, nice. Some some little scuff. Uh, it's kind of scuffed our, our top eight game, but I'm not uh, I'm not upset about it anymore. Um, no, then, we, we 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 did well, and I, I mean I was happy with the results. You know, considering yeah. our pulls were not great. Yeah, we got a Black Lantern chase with no Necron, which was uh, oh. Not where you want to be. Oh man, that's like a slap so, in the you know nuts right there. Like here, here's this yeah. black lantern chase, but I'm not gonna give you a rare. Yeah, it's funny. So TJ <laughs> actually had the best of the three teams, which is the opposite of last year. Yeah, you gave yeah. TJ the shit team last year. Oh, he took it. he took the team the bad team last year. <laughs> He's like, I'm playing Monarch. <laughs> this year, I was like, I want to play Poison Ivy and kill yeah, things. And then- and we, we like, like right away within our first three packs, we pulled Rare Poison Ivy, Uncommon Harley Quinn, Super Rare Harley Quinn. And oh, it's like, yeah. all right, find a Cyborgman and, and we're good. Like, mm-hmm. yep. uh, And then I think, TJ, you went undefeated on the day, right? Yes. I uh, think like I went. <laughs> Those vines are silly. Yeah. There's, I don't think there's anything other than 
camo that the vine with the three empowers can't kill. Yeah. In the entire set. <laughs> what the vines wow. remind me of is like those old ants from Ant Man. You remember the old ants from yes. like, yeah, Age of Ultron? Yeah. From the Avengers Simple and Age of Ultron, like the Ant Mans that used mm-hmm. to make those ants and just tied you up. <sighs> Bring it back those days. Here we go. <laughs> Um, but then in uh, in singles, um, TJ and I made top 32. Um, TJ, us both losing in top 32, but we still got Yeah. There. We ran into We were sitting next to each other. <laughs> <laughs> we were sitting right next to each other, too. Oh, man. Well, I, I'm proud of you guys. Uh, uh, as, Zach I don't, on? I don't think he on played. Team. Zach went on to go top. Uh, he got second in teams and then top eight. Or top 16. 16 or 8. I can't, I can't yeah, remember I can't now. Remember exactly. I tell you what, yeah. like, when I was, like, watching the teams, like, the update on the teams and stuff, I was like, when I read that Zach Brazier was in final two of teams for Worlds, I was like, what? <laughs> like, Zach? <laughs> with, and he played with the, the two Mexicans, uh, Saul and... Yeah, he played with Saul and Saul's brother, Richie. Yeah. Yeah. Like... I mean, what I can a... only imagine how communication was. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's still a little bit of a, a language barrier there. Oh, Zach! Zach said like I guess Saul was like, um, he's a Ravens fan, and Zach's a huge Ravens fan. So like, oh. I don't know. If Saul did some oh. like I don't know. If Saul did some like Facebook stalking and like found that he was a Ravens fan and kind of did his like research <laughs> and ed, like homework, or he's actually a Ravens fan, which. I mean, that's cool, but, like, Zach was like, yeah, he was coming up to me, and, and if you know Zach Brazier, Zach Brazier can talk to a brick wall, so I imagine the conversations were just fantastic all day. Like, we could have just recorded that for five hours. Probably. <laughs> yes. Um, oh. As, I, you did not play a certain team that we talked about on the podcast <laughs> for singles. And that <laughs> may be my fault. Yeah, so I was I, I I had gotten I spoke to everybody. I had everything ready to be borrowed. Um, everybody had brought me stuff uh, to play to play Shaggy, and then we're out at breakfast. What is it? Thursday morning. Um, yes. And we're sitting down, and TJ TJ's in the car with me and and my girlfriend. He's like, "Hey, hey, as what if you played good figures?" <laughs> <laughs> what, like, what if? Just hear yeah, me out. I'm like, what if? All right, I'm listening. And then we're, we're at breakfast, and we're talking about it. And then we're we're going to Walmart, and TJ is in the car, literally building the team. He's like, "You can play Venom Wolverine. You love Venom Wolverine." I'm like, I "Do I do?" He's like, "All right." And then we just put four apocalypses with it. And I'm like, "There's no way we can get four apocalypses." And I just hear from like slightly down the aisle as Jason's like, "I got two. Yeah, Chall- like, challenge there's accepted. There's no way this is happening. Evident. Challenge accepted. Click stuff has like all the apox, right? Yeah, and uh, and and by the end of it, it was I had borrowed four apocalypses, a Genesis, a Venom Wolverine, a Carnage, a big Carnage, all of the swords that I needed, except for maybe one one sword, um, terrain maps, and I'm like, you guys suck. <laughs> You know, you know what's what's alarming is like in like what maybe a, an hour span you were able to get like a two thousand dollar team just handed to you. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. Hey, that was all of our backup team. <laughs> yeah, clicked off. I think clicked off personally fielded eight apocalypses. Yeah, it's it's alarming how many apocalypses are in the team right now. Yeah. Um. um and honestly, like, I was pretty happy with my performance. Um, I go into every tournament just wanting a winning record. I went 3-2 with just over 1,100 points, which was good enough for 27th seed. And getting into top 32 after having not really played click since January. Yeah. Um, with a team that I had never fielded before. That's That's awesome. That's amazing. I'm super proud of you. I appreciate that. Thank you. And TJ, thank you for for convincing me to play it. Because it was just, a lot of fun. It was literally I just, just I, like... I picture this conversation in TJ's car. 
just TJ just driving in his red. Is it a it's it's a Camaro? No. He drives a Charger. Charger. Challenger. It's, kind of, Challenger. it's a Challenger. Whatever. But we were actually in Ass's car. Yeah, we were in we were in my girlfriend's car. Oh, so you're in Ass's car. So like you could just I could just see TJ just looking over and be like, Hear me out. What if you play with good pieces? That's just exactly like, how it went. I yes. just I see TJ's face. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the team was a lot of fun. Like, I didn't really have to think too much. But, like, because the team had no TK, no barrier, I was like, all right, turn one. Uh, I'm in the middle of the map. I mean, do you have uh, we're, we're, four I, I was just looking at my opponent, I'm like, I was looking at my opponent, I'm like, we're going to fight. Like, I'm, I'm not messing around. You, you have four APOCs that really can't die easily. Um <laughs> Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. And yeah, TJ, TJ, you played, did you play the Scarlet Witch? Yeah, I, I kept my Scarlet Witch team. Uh, same from Nationals mm-hmm. again. Uh, MOE, Scarlet Witch, uh, Saki. It's it's still good. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Uh, um, I went 4-1 uh, and one in Swiss, and my 1 was really a 0-0. A zero, zero. <laughs> oh. Yeah, uh, and then uh, played Scott, cramped in uh, top thirty-two, and went out to another Scarlet Witch. Ah, uh, that happens. Saki missed. Well, Saki didn't really miss, but Mad Jim hit his super senses, mm. and that was the that was the deciding open. That was my opening attack, and kind of decided the game there. Gotcha. Wow. Kind of had to switch stuff without the angler, so she wasn't going anywhere. Yeah. So, well, I'm, I'm, I was really impressed with uh, the system that they had now. Like, I could see like the matchups and stuff, and see everybody's records. So that, that was, app was so good. That was really nice because I mean, I wasn't there and being able to keep up with you guys and seeing how well you guys were doing. That was cool. So. Yeah, it was. I, I think they can still expand on it a little bit. Like, they, there's still some things that they can they can upgrade and, and fix from it. But just like not having to crowd around a, a pillar, yeah, to, to get your your matchup, like, it was so nice. But apparently, he built that system in like an afternoon. Yeah, that's and that's why I'm like <laughs> next year, like that system could be so much. Better. Yes, uh, I'm very impressed by that. I actually still have it on my phone. Me too. Okay. So that I can go back and look at, you know, reference things that I have forgotten. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, so, did you guys eat McDonald's breakfast? No. Uh, oh, this is this is a sore five. subject for TJ. <laughs> oh, it's, it's for both of us. We went there. And we, oh. we went and we were told that they were not open. <gasps> by the employees standing outside. Oh man! Um, and that's when we had to. I would have went. Out. Did you guys not try to go find another McDonald's or? So so we actually did eat at the McDonald's. We just didn't eat in the McDonald's. Yeah. Oh. We had to go through the drive-through. Yeah. Okay. And they didn't have breakfast burritos. Yep. So my whole day was just like shot from the beginning. Mm. That's the. Oh, bread. I guess I did go six and zero that day or whatever seven and zero that day. So I guess it... well, we maybe did better. Have really good breakfast though. Um, the day before on Thursday, um, I don't remember what it was called, but Egg- exactly, exactly, yeah, that place was really, really good. I heard you guys had some fantastic food, so I'm. Yeah. Oh. I heard about the pizza place, and I was like, "Dang, man!" I one hundred percent would go back to that pizza place. That was yeah. so good. Yes, that's what I heard. So. Um, and reasonably, like, not, like, super expensive either. Mm-hmm. Like, of course, you guys went and had barbecue. Did you guys go to barbecue with everybody, or? So, so Jason and, and Dan were like, we want to go get Marlowe's as top eight, or top 16 was happening for teams. And they're like, would you be upset? Me and me and Tita are like, no, no, go. You have to go. Oh, <laughs> Cause yeah, because we went us, to Marlowe's they before. They last year. <laughs> TJ and I are some of the most superstitious people when it comes to this stuff. Yeah. Yes. 
I know. Dion did say he's like, um, they kind of blame you not being there. And I was like, oh, well, <laughs> sorry. That's part of it. We were in the different wing of the hotel. Yep. Like, oh. The wind there was, there was blowing was... from the northeast and not the southeast. <laughs> I drove instead of flew. Whoa. We did get peanut butter and jelly sandwiches this year, and we did not get that last year, though. So that was a win. That makes that makes one of us. I didn't. Um, well, I just, by the time like the peanut butter jelly stuff came around, I was just like kind of already tired and and kind of settled in. I'm like, I'm not going downstairs to wait in line. Um. So I mean, I, I'm hoping that if I get to go to Worlds next year, that you know, I can maybe team up with my co-host here. Yeah, that's, that's if that's if. Uh, that's if you'll have me. <laughs> so uh, I think that could be arranged. Yeah, yeah, that, <laughs> that, uh, that could be. So, but this I, is a, this I kind of mentioned to Daniel. I said if I go to Worlds this year, I'm going to have to, you know, you you kind of team with your co-host, and I want to team with my guys. And he's yeah. like, I don't know if we could do this. I'm like, we've done it before. <laughs> we've done it before. So. <laughs> Yeah, it was crazy too. Like during teams that they pulled the same brick we pulled. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like piece for piece, exactly the same. I think they had like one different super rare. I mean, it just goes to tell you, like it just comes down to matchups too. Like, you know, it's and that's and that's the beauty of the teams is mm -hmm. like just. The ability to like lose a round and be okay because like your teammates bailed you out. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's it's so nice to have that. I mean, TJ doesn't lose apparently, so he doesn't have to worry about that one. I just know this as in Florida when we play teams, like when Daniel's like, "Hey, I want to play like the tent pole." No. <laughs> we gave him Thanos. We gave and, uh, him Thanos last year. <laughs> and uh I I remember my back hurting after that day. <laughs> hey, I'm telling you what, like I played my heart out and you did. Jay Solomon hit every super sense that game and it's yep. I when I saw him at Gen Con I was like, I still have like PTSD and he was like I honestly <laughs> still don't know how I won that game. I was like, Cause you hit every super sense, dude. So <laughs> Yeah. yeah and, and I know, like, for. I was the only person to get Emily's Hulk to first stop. Mm -hmm. To first stop, like, and I killed it. I know, because I looked <laughs> over and I was like, okay, Az beat it. Like, and Dan was losing, obviously, because he wanted yeah, to play Thanos. He, there's no way and, he was winning that. Match. And so then I was just like, I've got, I got to beat this. And then Jay was just like, nope, five, six, five, yeah. five. And I'm like, Jay, I rolled you out of the game. <sighs> so. But anyway, we have a couple guests that joined the the podcast. Oh, so, um, yeah, we have the two main hosts of the Clicks Off podcast. Um, so if you're listening, we have Daniel Powell joining us. If you can hear me and say Ooh. something. Yep. Hello, hello, hello. And then we have Mr. Jason uh, Alvey. What's up? Hey. So, first of all, we wanted to kind of talk to Daniel because, um, you know, Mr. I Hate Pulp goes to Worlds <laughs> and gets second place. <laughs> I think it's even funnier that we, on our last episode, said we were going to have the runners-up as, as our host since, like, you guys, the, the main show usually gets the winners. And the first <laughs> event, me and Tudor are like, we have to get Dan now. We have to get Dan on the show. <laughs> like, Yeah, indeed. He's literally in the same house as me, but downstairs. <laughs> yeah, I'm currently, I'm currently playing Ninja Turtle video way, games. Yeah. That's the wrong way, buddy. Okay. So, <laughs> but I just, I think it's, I think of of all the Clickstop people, like one again, Jason and Daniel. We said it earlier, but really proud of how Clickstop performed at Worlds. Um, everybody represented very well, and. Um, of all the Clicksoft players, like for Daniel to do so well in Pulp because he shit on Pulp <laughs> the most. Like, I mean, literally almost like call people out in that episode after Gen Con about Pulp. Like, it's it's just it's just funny. So, Daniel, if you would just go through real quick, uh, tell us what you played and maybe like a highlight of the day. 
Um, so golly, what did I play in Pope? Um, I played a, I played what Alex told me to play. Um, so after playing in Dinscon, I realized, um, that Hey, Daniel, uh, like, you was... sound very weird. Yeah, your mic got a little muffled. Mic got a little muffled. Uh, you are muffled like crazy. A whole lot of muffled. <laughs> is, that, is that better? Is that better? Yeah, I yeah, was there like, you go. We uh, were Dan, in, I had okay. <laughs> I have your team pulled up if you'd like to. If you'd like to oh yeah, no. I remember when I, I'm thinking about my new pulp team. Um, so, but um, my old pulp team uh, it was a Avengers team that uh, Alex, like I said, Alex told me to play. Um, it uh, included Blue Marvel, Falcon, um, the Franklin Richards, Valeria Richards after the swap. And party four. I don't think I am. I, am I missing anything? As uh, Doctor Strange and Ant Man. Doctor Strange, yeah, Ant Man and the um, uh, Invisible Woman were the swap mechanics. Uh, so every game, the swap was the same. There was no other swap options for the team. So um, you'll come back, buddy. Yeah, those are two um, really good swap characters for for Pulp, Valeria Richards and Franklin. Like, yeah, so yeah. they came in every game. They came in every game. So I mean, the, the I mean, as much as I, I don't know, crapped on Pulp, as like Sam said, I didn't. I didn't really. I just, I had just an unfun time at Gen Con or Pulp just because of the rules, the minutia law. I wouldn't call it the rules lawyers because it's the it was the minutia lawyers. Uh, that came out to play. So luckily I didn't play any of them at Worlds, but um, I mean, the team was pretty much um, do a, say, say the world say the word perplex a whole bunch, uh, pick prob with Franklin, uh, move him into position, uh, aerial extraction with Falcon, uh, pulse wave, <laughs> and you know, they would have to spin some uh, actions trying to KO Blue Marvel. And that would token them up. And then as a follow-up, I would send out Party Thor, who would pulse wave them again, deal them another damage, and token them up. And then hopefully they would be two tokened at that point. Their important characters would be two tokened at that point. And then pulse wave uh, from Party Thor again. Putting them four clicks down, right? Which means, you know, Doctor Strange, Valeria, Falcon... Franklin, right, they can mop, start mopping stuff up, but that, you know, 140 or 150 points of uh, Party Thor, Blue Marvel, and Falcon, um, you know, made a big deal. Um, so uh, then, then one highlight from the day, um, it, it finally happened. Blue Marvel naturally crit hit on, it, on, his, op on his opener. So, um you know, that was probably the whole highlight of the day. Um, so three, you know, two damage and then the knockback uh, to his whole team. Uh, I think it killed a Mar KO to Marvella. Um, maybe KO to Mary Jane, too. And, um, yeah, it was uh, it was pretty much downhill for him on that game. So um, now, now, I want you guys to, if you really listen closely at the beginning of Daniel's statement... He said he was thinking of his new pulp team. So no, look what this has started. <laughs> Daniel Powell is now building yeah. pulp teams. <laughs> yeah. Did you I'm in. The orb? Uh, probably. Um, it definitely includes Blue Marvel. So my 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 new pulp team. You know we covered it a little bit on the main show. Um, we probably is going to include like. Uh, Harley, Ivy, and Blue Marvel. Mm -hmm. uh, something GCU and, and uh, old Cyborgman. I don't think it'll be a full... Um, I don't think it'll be a full GCU team. And, uh, but I, cause I still think you need Falcon. So... And to all those listening and don't know, that is our son Theodore. <laughs> That's also joined the call. <laughs> So, but I mean, all right, yeah. So, uh, yeah, but I don't think I'll do full theme with GCU. Probably just do all the really good pieces from GCU, and um, then be able to still use Falcon, um, unless there's some just really good TK piece that comes out in pulp, 
like that'll move you eight squares or whatever, effectively nine, um, yeah. with some perplexes or whatever. Yeah. Uh, um, if not, then I, I think just Falcon Blue Marvel is the uh, beginning of all my teams, you know, till they retire. So, Jason, um, mm-hmm. what did did you play in Pulp and stuff? I can't remember what all you played in. I know you I played pulp. in a lot of BR. So. I, didn't, I didn't play in Pulp. I played BR. Okay. Did very well. Uh, I guess. Like, okay. I won a couple. Okay. I had a, I had a lot of bad pulls. Okay. Well. <laughs> but, yeah. But Jason got to play with Notorious before any of us did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Um, did you? And you played teams. Of course, you played with Daniel yes. and yep. and Alex. Um, yep. Kind of already talked about that. And then, did you play in singles? Yes, I did. I played Daniel first oh, round. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, that's a bad matchup. <laughs> and I got to, and I got and I got to play and I got to play Zach third round. Then I quit. Oh. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. Gosh. So. Just yeah, a, it wasn't very good. Just a it was, it bad was the total draw. opposite of a year before. Just yeah. a bad draw, you know. It's just um, yeah, pretty much the name of the game. Sometimes the so. the repairing the repairing that they did hosed us all. Mm-hmm. Of, hosed hosed the mm-hmm. hosed the team over for the most part. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I was not very yeah, good on the original pairing. Yeah, after after he played me, then he played Az, and I played the guy that Az played in the first round. I don't know how does that happen. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> and then somehow or another, in round three, me, TJ, and Zach all wound up with exactly two hundred and thirty-five points. I don't know how that happens. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that happens. Oh man. Well, um, again, really proud of how everything went. Um, just let you know that um, I've been recruited to join the sudden death teams. For worlds next year so um you'll have to stick with alex <laughs> darn um, <laughs> <laughs> no, i'm just kidding alex. no if alex, kidding, is, alex, alex yeah. is an upgrade for me okay <laughs> he studies <laughs> i just show up and i'm just I'm like a... i'm gonna write the build sheets <laughs> i did i am i am excited that we do have enough of a regular show presence to have two show based teams so um, you know, I, I did give Sam a, a hard time for not wanting to join me, you know, her husband in Team Sealed. But I just uh, want to say that I, you I, dropped I, me that one day, that one online tournament, three versus three, you just threw me to the curb. And I was like, fine, I'm going to get TJ okay, and Jimmy yeah, Costello. That, yeah, you threw me to the yeah. curb. So that was that one time three years ago when that happened. <laughs> <laughs> They you know don't what, forget, Daniel? You should hey, know. I'm a woman. I, I do not forget those things, okay? I know. I'm well, very well aware of that fact. But, uh, no, you know, it makes sense. It makes sense. We'll do we'll do our show-based uh, teams um, next year. So to go on with that, um, TJ and Az, we're going to have to get new shirts made because we got to bring Gator Tot into this. So oh, yeah. if you are new to the show and you're just now listening, the clicks off crew had Mr. Chomps and Scott Porter retired Mr. Chomps. So Mr. Chomps was well, we to still the, have him. He still, still have him. him. He's still he's still part of the team, but he he retired from his wrestling days. He went to the swamp. He found a young yeah. young lady alligator, started a family. He's a real estate agent now. He's a real <laughs> a real estate <laughs> agent. Um <laughs> and so he has a son named Gator Tot. So Gator Tot has emerged and he is taking over the Sudden Death podcast. And we're here to Gator Tot wants to challenge his first two victims, Daniel Powell and Jason Alvey. So oh, no. we'll go ahead. We'll start with Jason. So Jason, okay. now let's remind you that Gator Tot is young. He's agile. He has been studying all martial arts. And he's so watched, and not. he's and he's yeah. watched plenty of the old nineteen nineties re- WWF wrestling videos. So okay. <laughs> now, would you rather f- wrestle Gator Tot or the only movie that you could watch for forever in time is Spider Man Three? Oh, <laughs> and for the well, most part, Spider Man Three with uh, listen. This is the Raimi Spider Man three yes. and not the good yes. and not the good one. Yes. I can, I can watch That's what I was clarifying. 
Taz is the one that came up with this question, so he has to clarify which Spider-Man three. Yep. Uh, yeah, because no one is really good. Uh, right. Um. I guess I'll have to wrestle Gator Todd. I can't stand to watch that sh- that movie over and over again. <laughs> All right, it was well, it was the worst of the whole bunch. I'm just telling you, Gator Todd's not losing for the foreseeable future. So you pretty much just got your ass whooped by Gator Todd. So yeah, uh, everybody else whooped my ass this year anyway, so it don't matter. <laughs> Does um, I'll let I'll let Az or TJ, whichever one wants to ask Daniel's question. So you go ahead, Az. All right, Adam, would you want to wrestle Gator Tot, who, as we've as we've established, young, hungry, looking for for the vengeance of of his dad after the Scott Porter defeat, or play every figure that you've complained about for the last year? <laughs> All right. Well, so most of the figures that I've complained about for the last year retired. So silver. I can't. Silver Age. Um. Well, so we're talking Maggot Jubilee. <laughs> well, let's see. Scarab's banned in silver, so you, I can't, uh, I can't play Scarab in silver. Okay. So well, are you, you are you just, are you just mainly asking if I would have to play Maggot or Maggot and Jubilee? Jubilee and and anything else, but they are not allowed to be on the same team as Thanos. Well, yeah, Thanos is also banned in silver. I chose how much I pulled this format. <laughs> so, uh, it's a great format because all those pieces that we've talked about are banned. Um, so, you know, um, you know, I think Gator Tot has to put some uh, respect on the name because, you know, I know where his dad lives. And, um, you know, he might just have to know that I'm going to go into a match wrestling him, but, uh, you know, he's going to have to face some, uh, Daniel Powell math. And realistically, <laughs> when we go in, there's a 50, 50 chance that I want to beat Gator Todd anyways, but you take into account that I, um, I've been, uh, just a peak of hero clicks physicality and performance that uh, that lowers it down to another half (laughs) and then after that so it's only a 25 percent chance of gator tot winning then you take into account that i know where gator tot's dad lives and i know all of the ins and outs of the um mr chomp swamp um, that takes it down to a twelve and a half percent chance of Gator Top winning. Oh my gosh, this is so, really a would you rather yes or no? <laughs> this um, definitely turned into Steiner math, and I'm here shit. for it. Right. So um, I'm definitely wrestling Gator Tot, but I just want you to know that Gator Tot only has a twelve and a half percent chance of winning on a good day. Well, I'm just saying Gator Tot's gonna win. So, so. if the if the uh, if the swamp water was dirty that day, that lowers it down another half. That's six. Uh, that's six and six point two five percent. So, Gator, Gator Top better watch out. Well, I, I gotta go beat the Rat King. I gotta go beat the Rat King now. So, Gator Top better watch out. I know. I know how to. I know how to beat your sewer dwelling, uh, wet dwelling, wet area dwelling villains. So, watch out, Gator Top. Yeah, but uh, Gator Top has Jubilee on the sideline. Yeah. That's basically what's happening right now. It's okay. Professor X is banned in pulp. <laughs> <laughs> you are well, <clears throat> and Jubilee's a super rare. To be fair, Daniel, your question was going to be Wrestle Gator Tot, or for an entire year you have to play the team I build you. <laughs> That can also still be the option, since I clearly don't know formats well enough. <laughs> um, I think you, I think you'd build me a good team. That that's pretty easy, though. So. You know what? If um, Faust was still legal, I'd put Faust on every team of yours, just so you had to play him. Yeah, that's fine. See, he's uh, he's in Silver Age too. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm I'm going all in on Pulp, so. So, yeah, you well, have to build me a bunch of pulp teams. 
<laughs> well, we appreciate you guys joining the show. Um, if you're listening, join the guys. Uh, they do the Clickstaff show. Uh, they record more regularly regularly than we do. Um, and they talk a lot of more of like the set reviews and just overall uh, the meta tactics. And I guess now more of pulp tactics. <laughs> so, um, hey, pulp pulp is super popular. We get a ton of requests for for pulp reviews and pulp reviews and pulp tactics. And we had to uh, actually uh, add pulp into our set reviews now. So um, we had enough requests for that. So yeah, join them, uh, listen to them on their show. Um, good times. But thank you guys for joining. Um, thank you guys for being the first victims of Gator Todd. Um, he's gonna go. He's gonna go rest up from his victories, and um, we'll have to think about our next victim. All right. Thanks for having us. Right. Thanks for having us. <laughs> yep. You got it. All right, later. So. Um, yeah, for our for our t shirts, we're gonna have to um we're gonna have to get new t shirts and and put Gator Tot on there or something. Or we got Gator Tot action tokens. We got it. We gotta do something. Yeah, I'm telling you. Here. I, I'm telling you guys. I don't know if you guys know, but like, there are people that are all in on Gator Tot. Like, message Daniel and like Gator Tot is awesome. Like, yeah. <laughs> so I'm I'm glad that we. Then, right? Huh. We need to commission some art for Gator Todd. I know. We need to do something. Like, if, if you are listening and you are an artist and you are, like, wanting to draw us a Gator Todd, like, reach out to one of us. We'd love to see it. Um, I can't draw very well, so. Um, Ooh, that's a good idea. I, that, I like this. Uh, if people submit Gator Todd art, uh, we'll vote on it. And whoever wins, I will buy you a set of action tokens with the art on it <gasps> jeremiah Ooh. there you go yeah. yeah so let's let's start something i'll um yeah we'll do something we'll post something on our facebook page too about it so um i would say i would say reach out to tj or as with that stuff um just because <laughs> um i am just really really busy at work so I don't get on my Facebook too often at work, so they might be the ones that can respond a little quicker. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's do that contest. So if you want to submit yeah, some great. artwork and and we like it and we vote on it, and if we get a bunch of submissions, we we might open it up to the community and like vote on it. And if whichever one wins, we'll we'll throw a little goodie bag in for you. So. Um, but yeah, so on to the next thing real quick. Uh, Wheels of Vengeance has been previewed. Um, I think Scott Porter did his videos last week. Uh, so or, it started on Thursday, I so, think, or Wednesday. And the last one, I believe, was dead. Or yes. So um, a lot of good things coming out of that set. I really, really like the sculpts. Um Yes. I think they're going to be top tier, which, um, as you can see in some of the Notorious set, again, some of the sculpts are very top tier. And so I really yeah, have... I, I think it's very interesting. Like, I didn't expect them to have the glow-in-the-dark effect figures mm -hmm. being on lower rarity figures. I, I didn't expect them right. to be prevalent. Yeah, you, have, you kind awesome. of figured they were going to put those on, like, Super Rares or the Primes, or a lot of times they put them on the Chases, you know, like... Yeah, I thought yeah. it was just going to be all the Chases. Yeah. Um, that's cool. That's going to... I mean, that's kind of cool. I hope that you can almost, like, play in the dark and still see the figure. Unless it's just the base. Is <laughs> The whole figure is just the base. I think it's anything that is orange on the figure yes. will glow in the dark. Correct. That'd be cool. So, like, I'm just looking at Spirit Rider, which is the whole so thing. simple, yet so awesome. <laughs> the whole and thing. That whole, the whole figure is going to glow because it is all orange. Yeah. And, like, and like I said, they had lower rarity figures. Like, the Fire Demon is a common, and it has a glow in the dark space. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. That's going to be cool. Yeah. So... Uh. 
I, I have to give it to him. That's It's going to be... I hope it's not as big of a set as Notorious. I feel like Notorious... I mean, I know it's a mega set, but like... I'm telling you, I like, sorting that set was like forever long. Uh, I know. So Ghost... Uh, Spirit Rider is one of the chases, and that's number mm-hmm. 57. So I think it's going to be around probably a 60, 65 figure set. Okay, that's not too yeah, bad. I think it's sounds that's, right. Yeah. So I know that um, as you've really talked up Orb in the chat. <laughs> um, <laughs> Orb is really good. Orb um, is, I definitely think Orb is a piece that I would play. Like, just a good old fashioned piece that I'd play. Yeah. Yeah, like a forty five point character that comes with prob is a decent attacker. Grant his his big downside is he's a peanut base. Um mm-hmm. but he gets to crit on crit misses and he gets to die replace himself into crit misses. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like, it's so cool. I think he's going to be a staple in pulp. Um well, yeah, because Mr. Sinister... Is Mr. Sinister retire? No, or he's still around. He's still there, so that's definitely just play that and you take care of Mr. Sinister, so... Yeah, he he is anti-Mr. Sinister tech, but he is also very good with Mr. Sinister. Yes, he, like, he, it's awesome that you always get a one. He is more about making an attack. Um, I got to play with Omac Prime in my uh, pre-release, and... That was pretty. It was. He's a pretty good piece. I mean, he's not meta by any by any means, but just for good seal figure. Just for a seal, I was like, wow, he's he's definitely a a hitter. So yeah, I remember we were talking about him, and the only like thing that we were upset about is he has that two action token bonus. Mm -hmm. But he's a hundred and seventy five point character. Yeah, yeah, he's beefy. (laughs) So, um, I do have to say that, uh, one of the piece that Dan brought to my attention, was it last night we were ta- we were cooking dinner and he goes, I just want to show you this piece that I know that I'm going to have to get you if you want to play in Florida. And I'm like, Ooh, what is it? And again, I haven't really s- seen much of Notorious. Like I haven't played much. I've just been really, really busy, but, mm-hmm. um, the prime shark, the Camo, 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 whatever. Camo's really good. Um, and he was telling me about him, and I was like, "Yeah, you might want to get me a second. <laughs> you might want to get a second yeah. one." Yeah, um, like that is just sick. Like to be able to make a shark and then just move. Yeah, so I had to play against mm-hmm. this in top eight at teams. Mm-hmm. And that, sh- the shark pog, I'm like, I'm going to lose because of this pog. It was, in- it's insane, especially once he's like. Well, it's got animal. a charge, blades, 11 attack for three damage. Yeah. And once camo's in on you, he's getting to make two attacks every turn, just him. Yeah, like, it's, it's wild. It's so insane. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. So. But anyway. Only 110 points. Like he's actually a really good 110 point character. Mm-hmm. I feel like Notorious just has a lot of free attacks in it, mm-hmm. or at least the the good pieces have free attacks. I guess maybe that's uh, what I'm seeing. Yeah, I mean it's very possible to. Well, to here's the thing: you're going to need those free attacks because you're going to have to go against super senses and shape change all the time. Oh, we ain't, <laughs> we ain't worrying about super senses in this time ta- in this team. Are we, TJ? <laughs> no, there'll be no super senses. <laughs> Why? What, what am I missing something? Captain America <laughs> on a Pegasus is oh. our savior. Is our is our is our savior? He's he's flying in on the Pegasus, yes. like yes. Oh, like you know, oh. all the people really hated people taking away their powers, so they decided to play Captain America, who takes away your powers. But he only takes away your defense powers. Okay. Then he takes away all your powers because you're dead. <laughs> yeah, that kills you. Um, 
Yeah, this cap like I didn't know like I knew I liked this Captain America like when I first saw him, but it'd been so long since we saw him. Um that I forgot what he did. Was that and, like back in April? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it was forever ago. Yeah. And then like TJ was like, I'm I'm really think I might like build with like three of him. And I'm like, no, there's no way that that's correct. And then like I started looking at it, I'm like, wait a second. This might actually be correct. <laughs> um, and and yeah, he's just so good for forty points. Um, for anybody that doesn't hasn't really looked at him, um, for forty points you have an eight, eleven, eighteen, three, with traded ESD leadership, and gives adjacent or as guardian avenger key, uh, keyworded characters ESD hypersonic speed that when he hits. He gets to choose two friendly characters. They can use charge and modify speed plus one. And he has an attack power the entire dial that says uh, when he targets a single character, that character can't use defense powers. He's Gamora Prime, um, but not a prime. (laughs) (laughs) And he has uh, Invul on top dial with Empower. So you have three Empowers with him. And and when I when I first did my draft of the cavalry, because this is a team that TJ and I have really been back and forth on since Worlds, um, my main goal was I had to have an enhancement on the team too, because there's no way I was going to let this team lose the full grand prize APOC. And I'm pretty sure this team can't lose to that. Hey, as um, as hear oh, me out, God. hear me out. Yeah. What if you played with good figures? I, I have a I have one two three four five six seven eight nine, like fifteen good figures on this on this build. <laughs> He's unstoppable now, people. He's okay. unstoppable. Yeah. So this this weekend the weekend at Worlds was huge for me because it it made me reconnect and fi- refine my love for this game. Um, That's good. So it really like got me to be invested in the game again. Way to go, um, TJ. Way to go. I do what I can. I do what I can. <laughs> um, and kind of like shake off some of my issues with WizKids. It's, you know, they bought they bought back some of my, my faith in them. Not all of it. But <laughs> it's getting there. Like, if, we'll see what next year looks like. But, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm very excited to, to play more, to get involved in the, the competitive side again. So, TJ, so are you going to start playing this Pegasus team, too? I mean, uh, probably. <laughs> it was yeah. my idea initially. So. Yeah. yeah, and then I just kind of ran with it. <laughs> and and as then like... I made it so much. But my like my baseline, I was like, as hey, he's like, I'm just gonna buy one Captain America. I was like, that's not enough. One's good, but one's not winning anything. Yeah, and then I bought two more. <laughs> well, um, yeah, it... I was like, I remember we were sitting down building it, and I was like, all right, well, I need to like move these characters, and then I remembered how like starting area setup works on small maps. I'm like, it doesn't work! How do we get a Green Lantern team ability? And then we're like, Batman Prime. Figured it out. Yep. (laughs) My goodness. Now I do have to say, I'm looking at Wills of Vengeance, and uh, they have me sold because they're bringing back Night Nurse. So... Um, Ooh, nice. I'm I'm kind of stoked about that, because she was one of my favorite pieces back in the day. Like, She's just a good old, good old supporter. So, yeah. she's and, yeah. Night Nurse is just good. This new one is just so good. I mean, stealth support, like that's good. I mean, she has a special power that adjacent friendly characters that share a keyword can reduce pen damage, but like her keywords are not that great. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, I don't know what you're gonna. Which build. is funny, like her most, like probably her most relevant one is scientist. But yeah. Nobody on scientist has damage reducers anyway. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. mean, isn't this entire set? Uh, Midnight's uh, Marvel, Marvel Knights probably, and Heroes for Hire. Yeah, Defenders. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's like probably yeah. not too bad. Yeah, maybe if you're. I mean, she. I think she might be good for pulp. Um, honestly. Well, she's got to fight. Uh, she's got to fight uh, Aunt May. For the, the support spot. <laughs> She's double the points of Aunt May. Yeah, TJ played Aunt May in, in Pulp and was like, I'll never play another Pulp team without her. I'll yep. never. It's it, good. 
I'm, she's good. And in the five minute put together pulp team that I played. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, Wills of Vengeance. Um, I know the guys will be doing their big set review. Uh, we'll talk more about it when more stuff is released to us. But to start off, I think it's going to be a f- great set. Um, I'm really excited, and we haven't even seen the figure that I'm most excited about. Now, the only <laughs> thing I'm not ha- I'm not too like looking forward to is like the peanut base figures, just because like my OCD ness, like I like things being in a line, and when people play that and they put it as a diagonal, it really bugs me. That's like, fair. That's I don't know if it bugs anybody else, but I'm like, why? Like now it doesn't look symmetrical. It doesn't really fit. And I don't even know what squares are really in, and it makes and the whole fun- and I, and it makes the whole feng shui. Because then, if I want to become adjacent to it, it's like my piece doesn't fit in my square now because they're diagonal. Like, well, and since it's not a peanut anymore, you don't actually like have the room to place your figures in there at all. It's going to be taking up spots in all the squares. Yeah, it doesn't come oh, together. I didn't even realize yeah, that. it's like a solid piece, isn't it? Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's an oval. Or the, the Twinkie base, I think, is what they were calling it. The Twinkie base. The Twinkie um, base. Yeah. And, so, and then it, it also does. just turns into, like, the debacle of, like, sidestep and, like, you know, what square do they move from? Like, it's the, always... It's the always main rules been... question is, if I'm diagonal, are the two squares that I'm not in adjacent? <laughs> Well, you can't fit because there's a Twinkie base. <laughs> well, but but so can I put barrier in those two squares? The sure. answer is no, because they're not adjacent. But they are adjacent, but they're not adjacent because of my character. Characters don't stop adjacency. But as mm, <laughs> multi-base <laughs> characters, I'm pretty sure they're, those squares are not adjacent. I could be wrong. Somebody feel free to correct me in, in the comments on the show. If it was two characters, they're still adjacent because you can poison everybody. But it's one character. That's weird. I Like I said, I could be wrong. That's weird. Also, oh, I can see that. I, I think you would have to pick light. this. I think you have to pick the square you want to start your barrier. And that's the square that's adjacent to you. I see what you're saying. Like, you can't put one on each side. Correct. Yeah, you'd have to like you have to start the one because the barrier has to connect, you know. <laughs> like you can't just spread your barrier out. And, like you can't do like a rune. We like, can't do like a rune of barrier. <laughs> like, <laughs> but what if you could put out enough barrier to where the character wasn't adjacent to itself? That's why like, you can't do it. Oh, that but you would... can. You can. You can have two pieces that do barrier, and you can put one on each side. Oh, oh boy! Let's or do you can it. just have Mad Jim and do it. Let's. <laughs> I say, I say, let's do it. <laughs> let's make and it. Then how does the char- how does the character move out of that square? I don't know. Because part of it can't move out of it, the other part can. Well, you could put you could put a stop sign on one side. You could put a stop sign on one side and then bear it on the other side, right? And then they just can't get to you. Or maybe they should just make a rule that you can't place them diagonally. The figure diagonally? Yeah, it, it can't be on diagonals. And then we don't have to worry about this. That's true. That I mean, that could be a thing that comes out with the, the new rules with, with this, since this is our first like real peanut-based focused set. I, I know I say peanut base, they're not peanut bases, but I'm just so used to calling them that. However, if they don't make that rule, I am definitely going to bury somebody's half of a peanut base in. <laughs> and then make them make a ruling on how that half gets out of the barrier. <laughs> well, so there is a ruling for that. When multi-based characters move, they shrink down to one square. Okay. Hmm. So it just magically goes through the wall. Yeah, they shrink down to one square for their for their movement. 
See, this is this is what this is what it's going to be super confusing. I mean, like, I think the sculpts are going to be very good, but it just worries me about these peanut Twinkie base, whatever you want to call them. Figures. I, I, I love it's... personally from this Wheels of Edmund set that we got a figure that's about a year and a half too late. Which one? Which is the super rare Ghost Rider? But we could have <laughs> used him a year ago. <laughs> Ghost Rider and adjacent friendly characters can use their powers regardless of opposing effects. Oh. <laughs> that would have good against Scarlet Witch. Like. The funniest story about this figure is they revealed this figure at the Fan Appreciation Night, which was happening as we were <laughs> at Marlowe's. It was me, Jackson, TJ, and my girlfriend. And we were sitting there talking about like a hypothetical character that like if if they gave us the ability to design the figure back for, for Team Worlds. Um, and we came up with a figure that was like, this character can't, can't use powers. So that like, <laughs> it, it, and then they, they revealed this, and it's like, they stole our idea already! <laughs> <laughs> they weren't we were just that, we, we were just that into with what was coming. Yep. Hmm. We're reading well, them, reading the future there. Yeah. Speaking of reading, did we have questions? We we did have some questions. I gotta pull them up because I am I am failing here at this. Hey, uh, as while she's pulling up the questions, do you want to talk about your favorite piece that made top eight at Worlds? <gasps> yes. <sighs> yes. Let's talk I about that. The, the, that you should definitely talk about it, as. Oh, as you've got to do it, you got to do it. Fine, <laughs> Merlin made top eight. And but I will, Merlin. I will leave it. The, so I, I said this in the last episode that if it happened, <laughs> I would ask the question to the player: What did Merlin do? What did Merlin do? So, so I know the answer to this because okay. it's happening at the table to my right. Um, Merlin actually, I think, put Nate out of uh, the top 32 because Spider-Man's crime-fighting ability is a free action. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh, Nate. <laughs> so he tried to use his crime-fighting ability. And he couldn't. Which, which used his last free action, but the crime-fighting lets you take another action as free. As a free action. So he oh. had no actions. Oh no! And what it, would Merlin know, do, baby? <laughs> so, so what did Merlin do? It stopped a Spider Man. It stopped <laughs> a Spider Man. All right, that now, is, the, uh, that is I, the answer. I don't know the guy's last name. I know Dale knows. Um, his name's Rob. And Rob Ogre. Rob Ogre. Yes, and uh, I know Dale said that if anybody was going to do well with Merlin. It was going to be Rob, and kudos to you, bud. Yes. Like super yeah, he, pumped. He's a, he's a I great player. I played I'm, against him in Michigan State when he was playing Merlin and Double Sinister, and he's just so meticulous with it and does such a good job with it. It's it's pretty incredible to watch. It's I was super pumped when you guys said Merlin is in top eight. I was like, let's go! I cannot wait. To listen to Az have to say, what would Merlin do? <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, um, yeah, that I. Hey, to be fair, guys, we did try to tell people to play Merlin, yes, and I didn't. <laughs> well, and we even tried to convince Alex to play Merlin. The fact that Alex didn't play it was a, a bit surprising. Yeah. Uh, Alex, but is, Alex also didn't play in singles. Yeah, he did his own little thing. So um, I think we overhyped the Merlin. It was too much pressure. Too much mm, pressure. But I will. I will give credit where credit is due. I, I'm always willing to admit when I'm wrong and eat crow. Um, well done, Rob. You know, kind of proved me wrong on this one. I still don't think he's a good figure, but you have proven that he can work. Rob, you're our true MVP in sudden death's yes. heart. You played Merlin and you represented well at Worlds. So, we have some questions. Um, 
So Ian Eagleston has asked, what prime have you found yourself building with most in the post-rotation? Um, and with both Scott Porter's soon to be making their waves in the play, uh, what theme teams have you been considering? And he's looking forward to listening because he thinks these are fun. So, well, we sure. we obviously know what Az is playing with. What's for, for oh, prime? It's the, <laughs> o- it's the only team that I've I've actually been like building with and working on. It's yeah. Uh, I mean, Batman Prime and unthemed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm uh, gonna, yeah. yeah. Like, Go ahead, TJ. Go ahead. I was, I was trying to look at like teams I've built since Worlds, and um, one of them is Batman Prime, which is the same team as has, but also uh, Hulk Prime. Mm-hmm. I have a, a little, a little one. Good. Losing the cloak kind of hurts him, but he's still good. But the real answer that I know is going to be my answer is. It's still Mad Jim. It's still Mad Jim. Mad Jimmy J. Yeah. Mad Jimmy J. Yeah, he's, he's just still so good. I've already mentioned him playing him already today. So, um, I think my thing is, is I'm gonna like. I think this whole Kamu Kamu the shark um, mm-hmm. is definitely on my radar, and um, I love the keyword monster. I've always liked played monsters. So, I think I would kind of hey, try. Well, yeah, Good I, for you that WizKids also loves the keyword monster. I know. Yeah. I know. That's why I kind of <laughs> stick with the monster as my favorite keyword there, TJ. I mean, let's work smarter, not harder, okay? Like, I'm not picking my theme as, like, Injustice League or something, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm doing something that, like, hey... I'm gonna have a more. I'm gonna have a bigger selection of pieces to choose from. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I do. Out, if you want to play monsters, you can play X Men. That's true. Yes, very much so. Uh, which is um, scary. I built an Araco theme team mm-hmm. actually. Yes. You're if a you, liar. If you're talking about the I one did. that. If you're talking about the one. That Daniel, did you talk to Daniel about that or? I've got. Um, I put. It, I put it in the chat uh, a few weeks ago. It's hmm. it's uh, interesting. <laughs> it, I mean, it could also be an X Men theme team. I think. Of course it. Can. Let me guess. It's got APOC. <laughs> oh no! It can't be. There's no APOC on the team. Oh. Oh. What? Then it's not the one that Dana was talking about. So. No, it's it's um. Black Skull, Lissa Dark. Uh, Black Lantern, Batman, Necron, Genesis, Mephisto, Hulk Prime, Big Carnage, and our friend Scott Porter. Yeah, I yeah. Scott Porter's are going to be broken. It's going to be really hard to build without Scott Porter for the length of time that he's illegal. He is broken. Like I, I mean, it's just going to be like that's crazy. Yeah, he's really good. Um, Jason Phillips asks, um, what figure would you like to see as a legacy card in Wheels of Vengeance? Is Pulp a format that interests you? And if so, what pieces have you caught your, has caught your attention? Um, I've never played in a Pulp tournament, nor have I ever played a Pulp game. (laughs) So, um, I... Hearing all of the pulse wave and stuff, I don't know if I wouldn't play pulp. I don't, I don't know. So I do think it. I do think just from like an outsider's perspective, pulp gets better because of rotation, which because pulse wave isn't going to be as necessary. I think mm-hmm. because Mister Sinister isn't an incredibly like oppressive figure anymore because of Moira. Yeah. Um, so you might not need to, like, focus on Pulse Wave as much anymore, so maybe the, the game kind of opens up a little bit. I know, but now you have to just deal with Poison Ivy and Vines. And an Orb. An Orb. It's true. Uh, I don't know, man. Um, Maybe I just, maybe I just stick with the full strength meta and just... 
Yeah, I probably won't be playing Pulp unless, like, I'm literally doing nothing. So. I, yeah. I think I'm going to play Pulp because, uh, as As pointed out, um, after the top cut in Team World, <laughs> that if you take one piece off my team, it was a Pulp team. Two. You need to take off Golden oh, Glider. And oh, Golden Arlen. Glider. She was just an Empower. Anybody yeah. can do that. Yeah. Anybody, Anybody can do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, as for legacy cards, um, well, we know what they all are now, and none of them are what I expected. Well, I'm going to answer as though I don't know what they are, because I don't know what they are. Mm-hmm. Sure. <laughs> I have not watched the videos yet. Um, well, I'll tell you one thing. One of, one of mine, now, I'm going to answer two here, because the legacy card, now, maybe not in Will's Avengers, but the legacy card I want to see made is please bring back Flora Colossus because I have like 25 of them and I really want to play them again. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I mean, Flora was a great piece, but uh, for Wheels of Vengeance, I, I don't know what was previewed as far as the, the cards, but I'm telling you, they better bring back the Daredevil on the motorcycle that came out in... Um, EarthX. EarthX. Oh, I hope so. That so is, I, I have I, the I list of them. The time. Because after, after. he was so good. I mean, unless they freaking just nerfed him. Like, watch Wiz kids do that. Like, I mean, they're not going to give him the same trait. I, I'm yeah. almost positive. He's not going to have the same invincibility trait. Okay. Well. Eh, you're fine. I would be surprised. Oh, so I want to see that uh, old 2x2 two two Dormammu. Not the purple one. The one in the black robes. Sure. That's what I would like okay. to see. Okay, that's a good one. So, the the legacy cards that we got, yeah. that we've seen, we saw Jack-O-Lantern from uh, Civil War. Ooh, Ooh that's a good piece. Those guys. Yeah, that was a good, um, yeah. Uh, Deadpool, uh, Black Talon. Uh, I have heard rumors of this character, of him being absolutely broken. Um, oh, that's cool. Wait, the, the original, old, like, the original black cow, the one that could monster, control mind control monsters. Yes. Oh. Oh, uh, hey, friendly monsters. Hey, again, um, I like to build with monster theme teams. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, he can't uh, mind control friendly characters because that's something that doesn't need. To oh, exist don't ever. worry, don't worry. Enough people will start making memes about it and get it nerfed. So. No, it should just not exist. Like attacking friendly <laughs> characters shouldn't exist. Okay. <laughs> um, what if if you mind control them they have to take an unavoidable damage no you get a free <gasps> activation out of them could you imagine my controlling carnage silver surfer to do a free action and it kills something so then you take a damage and heal <laughs> I wasn't oh! thinking exactly that when I said it <laughs> oh, okay, well. and you get a free attack out of it and I went there so <laughs> <laughs> You think Surfer can attack four times in a turn. Yeah, no, this shouldn't exist. Um, Satana Hellstrom uh, from a Spider-Man set that looks really old. Uh, Mm, The super rare Hela from Mighty Thor. Ooh, that was a good piece. I like that one. This one surprised me. Witch Queen (gasps) Lafay from Super Rare Battle. Battle War Lafay? Yeah, here for that. Yeah, that one surprised me. Mm-hmm. Well, there's some Battle World pieces that were spoiled, so or in the video, so that, I like that. Yep, she was good. Uh, she was good. Hammer, Hammer from uh, Deadpool and the X Force. Yeah, the mm. gray dude in the big seat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was just good back then. That, that's a that's a good call. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer Kale from Battle World. Mm-hmm. Okay. Earth X motorcycle daredevil. Yes. Nice. He, he is better actually be, being made. He He's better be good. Like Man thing and Howard the Duck. Okay. The duo figure. That's an old okay. piece. Yeah. That's an old piece. Uh, two gun kid. I don't, I don't know what that is. From some old Avenger set. Hmm. Um, two by two Ghost Rider from the Spider Man set. Okay. Um, some other Ghost Rider from a set that I don't, that I can't tell because I'm looking at this picture and somebody just put them in HC Realms. 
Um, and then the Iron Man from Avengers Assemble, uh, the one that Dan made. Yes, that one that Dan that Daniel made. That that's. I'm telling you what. I saw somebody post about that. Like they were upset that Iron Man was in the, the Ghost Rider set, and I was like, "It was a prize." Yeah. Um, um, but the Jack O' Lantern that we've seen, he's the first of the legacy cards we've seen, is really interesting. He has one of those uh, blow up mechanics when he dies. Oh. So he gets KO'd. He deals three damage to a character within three squares and then goes to click one. Once <gasps> per game. So he's oh. like a he's like a death metal Wonder Woman, but like better. Yeah, it, it's like <laughs> explosive head or something like that is the name of the trait. How many points is he? <laughs> Uh, like 40, I think. What? Okay. What? 40 points. Once Keyword. per game, when Jack Lantern would be KO'd by an opposing effect, instead turn him to click one. After resolutions, deal an opposing character within range three damage. What's, so, what is this keyword? So you're going to tell me that they made him unique, right? We don't know. I don't, I'm not sure. Sensor oh, okay. Syndicate, Skeleton Crew, with Thunderbolts, and Monster. Oh, he's got Monster! <laughs> Oh, let's go! Yeah, so, okay. <laughs> so I just found this, and uh, he is not unique based on the card image. That I'm <laughs> oh, at. dear God! <laughs> now it's not three penetrator in it; it can be reduced. Still, what if we're in a world of super senses? Ain't nobody got reducers, <laughs> right? Wow. So I'm glad I still have a jack o' lantern somewhere. Mm-hmm. Everybody start getting those jack o' lanterns out. And I, the and the ghost ghost rat or uh, daredevil motorcycle. I have to say I'm I'm kind of stoked about daredevil coming back because I remember when the set came out and like daredevil was released and like everybody was like he's so broken and he was such a fantastic piece. Daniel went and bought like six of them, and I was like, why do we have so many of these daredevils? And he's like, because they're going to be broken. I think he played like one tournament with like two of them. I'm like, okay, why do we ha- why why do we have six of them? <laughs> but the problem with that Daredevil when he first released is when he released Starro was still in the meta, and Starro fights just ate that character's lunch. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like every time I played it when it was modern, that. Uh... He gets crit hit every time. The first, the first three attacks, yeah, he was dead forever. <laughs> I uh, know. Like, it wasn't it like if your opponents rolled a six? So, or... okay, if you attacked him and rolled a six, for every six of the roll, they got to one remove one of his tokens. And if he was KO'd when he had no tokens, he died. Yeah, because I remember. And if the roll had a six in it, it could not be re rolled. And I remember right. playing in Daniel in a tournament, I think in, it was in Huntsville, right before we had Theo. Um, I rolled like a crit hit and then I rolled like a six and a one or something and like Daniel got super super mad <laughs> that I yep. killed his daredevil I was like I'm so sorry <laughs> I'm just rolling dice yeah so. I'm, I'm curious to see what they do with that I'm really curious to see what they do with Witch Queen Lafay. that was um, a surprising one yeah that's gonna be good so well, well hopefully she counters all monsters she says, if you have the monster keyword, you can't heal. Shut your face, Ooh, TJ. Man. Shut it. Shut it down. That, that would be amazing. <laughs> Shut and it down. That, that is exactly what she should do. I thought we were friends, TJ. <laughs> <laughs> uh, William yes, Hall- William K. Holland asks, um, rate the Black Lanterns from best to worst, and how do they stack up for the- versus the deceased chases? So... Ooh, that's uh, a, that's I, I know where I rank the top three. I know that I rank basically Superman as number one and Batman as number two. <laughs> I so rank, I, that is I'm, not I'm, my, my rank. I, I would flip those at least. Or I, actually, we forgot about Green Arrow, right? Yes. My my top three is Green Arrow, Batman, Superman, in that order. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I would say Batman, Green Arrow. They're, they're one and two. Here's I don't know which order. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. And then Superman's right just a step below them. Batman is just so good, and he's the best one to play in multiples. Uh-huh. Uh, any character that can just be anywhere on the map at any given moment is silly. Yep. Because of Necron. 
Yeah. He's mm-hmm. also the, the Black Lantern you don't want to heal. Yeah, you don't want to heal him. Yeah. Because then he loses Flurry. <laughs> I think Superman's good yeah. just because with Necron. If you can if you could pull off the Superman Necron thing and you have a Superman oh, yeah. that's just like yeah. gross as get out. I, like, I don't know. Like I, I like it, but like they should have just made him power cosmic. Well, you still you still need two outwits to get through his defense power. Yeah, but like just it's Superman. Yeah. <laughs> TJ it's they're a trying point hey, Superman. TJ like, they're trying to make the game a little bit more user friendly and better and not so broken. So <laughs> uh, Right? Is that is that where they're going with, is that what they're going with this or I guess. <laughs> Um, I mean, I'm just gonna put Galactus on it if I play him, and it'll be fine. There you I mean, go. You can. Perfect. Um, how do they stack up versus versus the sta- the deceased chases? Um, not very well. I, I mean, like they they're I like see. deceased chases are like the lower tier, <laughs> yeah, I believe. I agree. Um. <laughs> oh. I don't think of these chases have have meta play. <laughs> Um, they definitely are just kind of like the chases like you pull like you get a break and you're like all right please be a black lantern chase and then you pull like a deceased joker and you're like or deceased wonder woman and you're like damn it (laughs) you know you're like oh that sucks now the superman is kind of interesting just because on the last one yeah, the yeah. Superman is probably does. the only one that's good, ish. And even then, man, it's hard to it's hard to justify that seventy five points for me. I'll play him at sixty. It's fun. He's a right. pen attack. Oh, <laughs> just gotta roll those nines. Yeah. Um, I love that five move hypersonic. I do have to say, one of my favorite sculpts of the set that I've seen is the Aquaman. Yes. Um, the Black Lantern Aquaman. Wow. That thing is legit. Like, yeah. you could put that on your shelf and you're just like, you don't even have to, like, know it's a hero click. So it's like, that's just an awesome, like, sculpt. And I was like, dang, yeah. they did. On- on that topic, I will say also the deceased Hawkman looks really good. Yeah, I've seen that. That's great. Deceased Wonder Woman looks like shit. <laughs> 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 and it really makes me upset because I love Wonder Woman so much. And I, I tried it on my desk. I have a few like hero click sculpts of her. Um, and it's like, gosh, it's like, come on. I know it's like a deceased figure. It's kind of like zombified, but you could have done better. I think. This character's so bad. <laughs> Thanks, Az. Yeah. <laughs> the deceased one. What's the Black Lantern one? Look? She better? She's um, better. She's better. 100%. She is, she's okay. She's still not... I just think they could have done a little better with her. But, I mean, Superman's sculpt was really good. Batman's sculpt is really good. Aquaman is just fantastic. The Martian Manhunter sculpt, like, because that's I played that in mm-hmm. games, is pretty, is is good. It's it's very Martian Manhunter, like, very stoic, you know. Yeah. And I think that he's good. Yeah, yeah his, I can see he that. Needs some help because his reach is a little, his reach is a little rough. But having shape change and impervious and all mm. of the improved targetings, and yeah. having improved movement through blocking that doesn't destroy is huge. I mean, I like his, you know, it's 60 points, essentially, right? Yeah. You're going to play with that. And play him with target through everything. He's got, what, eight squares of reach? So. Yeah. Not, not terrible. Oh, no, that's half the math now. <laughs> that's going it's, it's very true. Oh. Um. So, Peter Marshfield, our last question is a three of Parker. So, we'll just start with the first question and then we'll kind of go through. Um, he <laughs> says, with rotation having taken place, 
which I'm we're all sad about. R.I.P. Felix Faust. What are some equi- I would say R.I.P. Felix Faust. <laughs> what are some equipments uh, that we predict will get some good attention? So. Ooh, equipment that's, ooh, that's a fun idea. Um, uh, can we just state the obvious that, uh, con- like the lantern constructs? Like lantern rings? <laughs> lantern whole. rings? Can uh, we indigo, just state the obvious? I mean, indigo ring <laughs> is going from, like, barely played to going to be um, a vast majority. You better have an indigo, <laughs> yeah. Um, if you don't have an indigo ring... Please get one now before they are eighty-five dollars. They're already that price. Well, too late. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you want to play Black Lanterns at all, you're going to need that. Yeah, uh, I also think an Astro Ring um, goes up in playability. Yeah, mm-hmm. because it's uh, Cordy and Thunder and Scott Porter are really good with it. And Lissa Dark. And Lissa, does she have Sinestro Core? Yes. Oh, I didn't even know that. Sweet. That's why I built with her. She's good. Oh, but she's a Herald, too. Yeah. So she can get Conchu. <laughs> she's Conchu, too. See? <laughs> See where I'm going here? <laughs> um, other than that, uh, I think the Symbiotes probably yeah, should play. Yeah, that's... Like, Necrosword is gone. Yeah, I kind of was going to say the Black Symbiote is probably going to see more just because it's giving you still energy and stealth. Um, yeah. Stealth um, would be a big deal with uh, Sur- so, uh, Carnage Silver Surfer kind of rising up. Now, I yes. do have to say that I really think that we'll see some rise of like some swords that really haven't been able to see like I think Miramasa Blade might be come back, or um, maybe. I just think we'll see some of these swords that may not be able to, may not have seen play because there's been, we've had Dark Holds and Necro Swords, uh, actually, you know. I feel like the Miramasa Blade doesn't work ever because anybody who plays it has. Uh, Genesis on their team. <laughs> okay. Well, no, then, Lost Blade actually checks the die result. Well, you could play actually, Blackbone. Blackbone's good. I was just about to say, I think Blackbone. Blackbone. Oh, Blackbone, the one that, Blackbone the one that's the problem? It's the one that stops stop. Yeah, that one's good. Yeah, Blackbone because I think we'll be able to see. It's yeah. be everywhere. I just think that we'll, I think we'll be able to see some more of those swords that kind of were put on like the reserve team and now that a lot of the S tier meta equipment is gone it's going to be like let's bring in the reserves and see how they do Um, I know myself I'm looking at Galactus it still blows my mind it's legal (laughs) yeah but it's still legal (laughs) Because it's been the, out forever. You know, it's been out. It feels like it's been out for like four years. You know, it was legal for the first Clicks Cup. Like yes. it came out in 2019, 2020? 2020. It's like somebody at WizKids completely forgot that they made this huge Galactus, and they're just like, "Okay, rotation <laughs> list, let's go." And then everybody's like, "Oh yeah, we forgot to put Galactus. We'll just put them on next year." And then next year rolls around, they're just like making this list and. They're just like, Galactus is just hiding behind all the figures like, you don't see me. <laughs> but, That's just crazy. The point there is, the witches are gone. So you get to have your powers most of the time now. Yep. Uh, so mm-hmm. that pesky outwit, you uh, can get around that <laughs> now. <laughs> Truth. Yeah, get that. Um, so he asks, silly. Um, he says, which figures after rotation are you each glad that no longer are in the modern meta? <laughs> Maggot. That's a good one. Maggot. I'm glad Maggot's gone. 
stupid. You know, the first team I played at Worlds in singles was three maggots. Or did... four maggots, I think. It was three or four maggots. It's... TJ, yeah. did you place the did you place the terrain in the right spot? I did. And then <laughs> Like, I didn't even look at his team. I just saw the maggots, and I saw the lockjaw, and I was like, okay. So I set my team up, and then I was like, where's your Cosmo? <laughs> he didn't have a Cosmo. Oh. So, so I did you... all that prep. I did all that setup. There <laughs> <laughs> <It> was no <laughs> Cosmo. <Okay. laughs> we were just, you were just overzealous. Um <laughs> I mean, it worked out, but it's still just hilarious. It's like I, I did the whole setup to just stop the Cosmo thing from happening, and there was no Cosmo. Um, I'm telling you, Maggot was such it. He was a good piece, but like his Pog thing was so broken from the get go. I don't know how he made it so long without being like on a watch list, or he was on the watch list. They deemed that he was not a problem. I don't. That's yeah. just weird. I don't know. I'm glad Maggot's gone. Yeah. I'll just say it. I'm glad Maggot's gone. <laughs> How about you two? Maggot? Oh. I, can it just be an equipment and be sure. the, the, the Necro Sword? Yeah, that's a fair one. That, that, that piece that, didn't no, get played a... very much until like the, the very end. Like No one played Necro no, Sword until no. the very end. <laughs> when the new equip rules happened is when it, mm-hmm. is when it was able to see more play because there used to be an opportunity cost to playing it. Of you had to have a TK or yeah. somebody with a bad power because super strength wasn't good back then mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. to to do it. And then when you could just equip it, yep. it got a lot better. Mm-hmm. And Spider Man, and, Spider Man, definitely. And Spider- yeah, Spider Man definitely made that piece. So okay, what about you, As? Scarlet Witch. <laughs> Scarlet <know>. Witch. <laughs> I think Get if, her out of here. I think if we took a Get poll her. and we asked this question, about 90% of people would be like, it's Scarlet Witch. <laughs> Get gone. Let me play tent poles again. Well, I mean, stop sign still exists. So you still can't play tent poles. But... <laughs> that's very true. Um, and then the, okay. last, the last question he has is, uh, tarot cards all add something you need to build. But what are some of the cards that aren't that are not being played as frequently, but you think that sh- maybe should get more attention. Mm. Interesting. First of all, I think tarot cards should cost points. Agreed. Like, I think it should be 10 points of your build. Like, to have the deck. To have the deck. Like, if you want to yeah. play five cards or 25 cards, it's 10 points. I think it should cost. Something to play a tarot card deck. It's and it's... I I think even more so now that we're getting free equipment. Like mm-hmm. there's points on the build that can be allocated to that. Yeah, for sure. Um, I have to say I don't know the card's name, but uh, Nick Ballou played it against me at Tennessee State, and it was the stealth card. Um, Age mm. of Pentacles. That card is so good. Um, the whereas... one that gets the one. That gives like super stealth it's, so characters can't use improved targeting abilities and you get to bounce yeah you get to yeah you could move like four squares you can place into a square of hindering six squares away yeah six squares so like him with felix so everyone's agatha that's yeah awesome yeah and it was really good with faust because faust vooped for four had stealth so like if you vooped into a um, a hindering, and then that car was up, then you could move six into another piece of hindering, and now you're just, like, up there. Yep. I had an Agatha build that, like, that was the reason that I built it, so that Agatha could do that. But, here's the thing, yeah, I think smart. it's gonna, I think it'll be a lot of play, because you got Batman, you got the Black Lantern Batman that gives out like, the super stealth, right? Well, yeah, like, and that's really big for him because improved targeting and hindering still gets around his trait. So, so if you shut off improved targeting, then mm-hmm. yeah, you just can't be shot. Like, I think that's a card that'll definitely be played for sure. I could agree with that. Well, plasticity card's still going to be was it seven of pentacles? That's... Oh yes, yeah. 
Oh, yes, because... And that card's going to be everywhere. Well, and then we have this, you know, still $300 piece of Carnage Silver Surfer. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be out. It's... I, I mean, there's there's going to be a lot of new cards. I think it's going to um, come I to think the... the number one card, if you're not playing Black Lanterns or Monsters, should be Death. I, I was just looking at that one, too. I think that's a very good call. Mm-hmm. That's um, anti-healing, so... Yeah, characters yeah. can't heal. Um, also good, like, because Mephisto will still be around, like, good against, like it's not just into those uh, Black Lantern. Yes, that's true. It counters a lot, and people don't really use that card right now. Mm-hmm. Yep. So... Lots of lots of good. Again, I think this is kind of like the equipment thing, where there's been a lot of great. There's a lot of great cards that people have put in their reserve pile. That is going to be brought to the forefront because of the, you know, tactics that are being used in the meta now. There's Ooh, gonna be... I think Nine of Swords is probably going to see more play. What does that one do? A precision strike card. It should. When a character that can use Precision Strike makes an attack, that attack can't be evaded, and damage taken from the attack can't be reduced below two. Do characters have Precision Strike? I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But <laughs> not a like if you can build a car- a team with Precision Strike characters. Oh, I think the the Green Arrow has Precision Strike, right? I think so. Yeah, that seems good. Let me guess. Does Prime Spider Man have Precision Strike since? Uh, no, he has Super um, Strike. No. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I mean, he's got everything else good, right? <laughs> we'll just give him. <laughs> so. Um, but yeah. But now he has to deal with Shape Green and Super Senses, so he's got problems. Yeah. He's got some problems. I still think he's good, though. Yes, he he's still very good. I mean, can't play him with Kamo or Kaimu. Can't play them with a the shark because they're two primes. I mean, unless you want to, Tyler or Jalen build your team, and you can. You know, unless you want. <laughs> it's funny we had this talk at at Clicks the other night, and you know everybody talks about like, you know, oh, you just got Zach Brazier, it. like you got to roll the fives and sixes, you got to believe in yourself. And we were talking about the two primes, and we're like, yeah, if you just want to Jalen it, like, <laughs> and I mean, Jalen, we love you, but like. We just always just remember that you, you play with two primes. <laughs> For an entire round. For an entire round. Like, <laughs> I, I always like, to, I always like to, to preface that story, though, with, and then went on to top four playing a build 30 points under build. Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's a good player. Yeah. Just because he's good at the game. Yep. Yeah. He took, he took Q off the build and still made top four. <laughs> just... Jalen knows what I... You and Mike Rod are so good together. How does nobody thought about this? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh, Uh, man. So, good. Those are the good times, you know? Those are the good memories we have. Now we have to deal with all the shenanigans of constructs and tarot cards and pulp format. Yeah, back when you only had to worry about not putting two primes on your team. You know, yeah. (laughs) Um, But anyway, yeah, so... That's all the questions we have. Um, I do know people are loving to loving to hear the podcast, so we'll definitely yeah. have to do this more. So, anything else? Sure. Anything we'll else you guys want to talk about? Or, um, I don't know if it's. I'm pretty sure by the time this episode goes up, registration will be closed. But for mm-hmm. anybody interested, uh, there is an online farewell tournament to farewell to online play uh, that Brad is putting on that is collecting money for charity for observers and donators. So check out the broadcast uh, channel to get more information. When's about that. the registration for that? Uh, oh. Registration closes t- uh, Wednesday. Okay. Or today. I can't remember which one. <laughs> I think it's today. Actually. <laughs> if you're listening to this, we're yeah. recording a little late or That's what I said. I'm pretty posted, sure the registration is closed um, by now. We have a teammate or co-host on this show that likes to fall asleep prior yeah, to recording. Recording when we originally wanted to. 
But you can still get in for donating to – they're allowing charity probs to be donated to players. Um, like I said, the donations are going primarily to charity. So Yeah, I'm, I'm looking to forward to – Do you donate charity probs to or they just go into a bucket? I think you get to pick who they go to. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Daniel's going to be like, you need to watch my games and prob me every time I miss. <laughs> I'm like <laughs> – we're just all watching dance so we can prob in. Yeah. <laughs> prob him out of a hit. <laughs> Be like, I don't know, anonymous you prob- donor probed you out of a hit. So. <laughs> well, like, yeah, I'm like, no, no, you didn't. Now, I know when, like, was it the first year of Rock Cup where they did, like, the, they did that tournament with the themed, the charity prob the and charity stuff? Um, There's a cap. I, I I know there was a cap. Daniel hit the cap. Like he said, I yeah. used every game. I used all my charity there props. Was five every round. Like, I, I did too. <laughs> I think most, like, it was like every game that was on stream was like first attack, both players burn all five charity yes. props. Yes. Top eight, <laughs> I played Scott, and on my opening attack, we all, we both used all five charity props. Yeah. And we both had, but we also both had like three regular props that we also used. Well, I mean, like I like how they they put caps on it because I know, like way way back in the day, we went to North Carolina one time, and they were talking about how they used to do this like charity tournament, and it was just for, you know, fun, and they raised money, and like you could just be walking by, and like if you wanted to prop somebody, you just threw a dollar down and said prop, and. Like games would last forever because they people would just prob like thirty times, so yeah. like one attack would take like twenty minutes because of all these props. So it's like I'm glad they kind of cap it that way. If like the game can progress, but that's. <laughs> but yeah, the the tournament like Brad was a a, a staple head, uh, a figurehead of, you know, keeping clicks really going during the pandemic with mm-hmm. online play, so. He, this is his farewell where he just can't do it anymore. So this will be the last online tournament that he puts on. So I kind of wanted to give him a bit of a, a shout out. There. Yeah, it, it, his a, he did sure. a really good job um, keeping that keeping that alive. And it definitely helped me out because I was able to watch games. Um, yeah, even and, if you didn't play, you, there was... And, and, and stay in the meta, like staying kind of relevant with what's going on. So... Um, I want Tony Bruno to do his tournament again. Remember his? Um... Yeah, I gotta, I gotta win this one again. <laughs> no, I mean like the one that he did where, like, um, everybody was like on a that team. one where, that one where Az played Venom Wolverine. Yeah, the one that I won. Was that the one that like you had like your own pod and you had to like win your yep. pod and then you go on? Yep. Yeah, like that's I want that back. Yep. That was fun. Yeah, I, I still have my trophy from that one. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's do that again, or let's do. Yeah, those let's, are fun. I I would like to do the online teams one again. That was fun. That um, was fun. That yeah. was that was fun. Poor Jimmy Costello. I mean, <laughs> he he wanted to play that team. And I was like, okay, buddy, just <laughs> don't die. <laughs> like, um, but yeah, I mean, you did a good job both today, not dying. He did. He did. I died a lot, but I scored a lot of points. So, um, yeah. that was a fun day. But yeah, um, if you're listening to this and the registration's still open, definitely check out the broadcast um, tournament. Um, if you're not going to be able to play, definitely check it out. Watch some games. I know he's giving away some prizes to people who just watch games. Um, Every round. Yep. And so, watch games. Stay up. Stay revel in the meta. Take notes. Um, donate to charity. So. Yeah, support Brad. Things. He's just a good guy too. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's Very a good guy. So, so. Um, TJ, are you going to Florida? Did you decide if you're going to Florida? I am not going to Florida. TJ January is way too hectic. TJ, I thought we Chief were friends. Happened like two <laughs> weeks ago. I was like, TJ, you better go now. Cheap flights. Can't do it. In the accounting world, you know, January's tough. I, I work in charity, I know. <laughs> well, um, just um, go ahead and plan for next year. Um, yeah, go ahead and put in for next, next 2025. 2025. Yeah. Like, I may not be able to go in 2025. That's the thing, because Theo will be in kindergarten. Like, I'm 
Oh. You, you may have to take my spot, TJ. That's what I'm saying. Like, you just need to plan ahead. So. <laughs> I'll get on that. Okay. Because yep, I'll be there. <laughs> As will be there for sure. So, um, again, it was, it's been a pleasure talking to you guys. Um, for sure. I think, I think Daniel and, and Jason really liked the whole Gator Tot. Um, hopefully, <laughs> Hopefully, our, hopefully our listeners really like Gator Tot. Again, if you want to participate in making some Gator Tot artwork for us, um, contact Az or um, TJ. Or you can contact myself. Um, I don't know how fast I'll respond, but I'll get to you. Um, but if you want to submit some artwork, we're all up for, we need a good mascot. Uh, picture. Yep, and then for sure. like you said, uh, the the selector maybe we'll get a set of action tokens that we get made by Jeremiah Peters. Yeah, we we'll get some. Yeah, I will do that. I'll I'll organize a bit for Jeremiah to get that done once we pick one. Yeah, I mean that'd be cool. Depending on how many we get, like maybe we'll pick the top three and put those up for a vote. Yeah, sure. yeah. I'm, I'm or, definitely. You know, depends on how many we get. I mean, we have we kind of have a staple picture i think in our mind for mr chomp so let's make gator yeah. tot even better <laughs> yeah <laughs> so anyway but it's been a pleasure until next time uh let's just say say our final thought so as it's good to be back tj merlin is a good figure TJ, you took mine. I was going to say, what would Merlin do? <laughs> but um, WWMD. Love you, as. Uh huh. <laughs> but until next time, uh, we'll catch you next time at the on the podcast. Um, again, we'll record a little bit more frequently than we have been. But uh, listen to Clickstaff and listen to us. A sudden death. We'll see you guys later. <laughs>